WRC 19, the World Radio Communication Conference, is being held this year in Egypt in Sharm el Sheikh. WRC 19 is an event that brings together around 3,000 delegates from all over the world. In charge of security and safety for the event is ITU's head of security, Drew Donovan. He's agreed to jump into one of the buggies that's being used for security and to ferry people around the venue and give us a little insight into the responsibilities that this job entails. This is uh, our, our own uh, buggy that's been given to us and uh, we're doing a lot of um, transportation of uh, the different uh, VIPs that are here. We're also looking after all the people that have some mobility issues, some of the delegates to assist them and uh, we're just trying to provide as much service as we can uh, when, when, when required. So. You had a fair few uh, mobility issues here? I mean, in certain terms of people who were mobile before they arrived now had to you walk well, thousands I, I, of steps around this venue? I, I, I think that, you know, the, the 840 uh, meters that from one Capitol building to the summit building takes its toll on the uh, delegates, and some of them have already arrived uh, with some mobility issues, and some people have uh, also had some mobility issues during the conference <laughs> itself, which is long. And the responsibilities of an event such as, uh, such as this, it's a pretty uh, full-on event, 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Yeah, this is 24 hours a day, it's seven days a week. It's been going like this since the 21st of, actually before that, the, the, the actual uh, lead up to the 21st of October for the radio assemblies. And, uh, you know, this is part of our job uh, when it comes to these kind of uh, world events. So there are about 3,000 delegates here, is that right? Yeah, about 3,000 delegates. I think we're just uh, shy a few, uh, a few uh, of that. And uh, we expect to go over 3,000 before the end of this week. Uh, and we still have another week to go. So uh, we'll see what the numbers will be like. I mean, that's already quite a bit uh, bigger than the usual WRC that happens even in Geneva itself. So. And what about the security team? What science team do you need for, for an event such well, as What this? I try to do is always try to have our own eyes in the actual venue 24 hours a day. So what I try to do is I bring in three security officers who are my officers in Geneva. They're working eight hour shifts. They're all fully trained and qualified in uh, first aid uh, and all the fire safety rounds that we do and also to be working with the security from the host country, uh, whether it be the police or, or the uh, venue security themselves. And that's part of how we, we create a, uh, an event security team, which is comprised of, uh, as I say, host country police, venue security, ITU, and we also use the UNDSS, which is here in Cairo, which is looking after Egypt. And you had the, uh, we have the president of, uh, of Egypt here for the opening ceremony. What was that day like for you? Well, that was, a, that was um, you know, a managing expectations. We knew that it would be a bit chaotic, especially uh, having been here for the COP14 uh, conference in uh, uh, November uh, last year. Uh, so we knew that um, we needed to have a secondary accreditation, which was the only accreditation that would be allowed in. So we're just really managing, making sure we had the right communication to be able to send our delegates and our staff to the right uh, area to get their accreditation and then to come in uh, uh, under those protocols um, that are enacted for any time the president of Egypt comes into a venue. So what happens when the president uh, and a very high level VIPs come? They lock down the area? What? Uh well, in, in, in fact, they, they, they lock down the area about, uh, about 12 hours before. They go through a, an extensive uh, uh, defensive search, which includes uh, using explosives, dogs, uh, and uh, all these um, types of uh, qualified uh, police that are coming in. Uh, the president, uh, with the president coming, they actually use their own uh, security Republican Guard that does that. And uh, the, the police that are here for our event they take uh, an opportunity to back out and let the Republic Guard do their job. Uh, they're there as support, obviously. Uh, and until the president leaves, um, the Republican Guard are here. And then after that, the police come back on their posts. <laughs> and that's when the blood pressure starts rising, is it? What's the most stressful time for you? I, I think for myself, it's, it's, it's about uh, 24 hours in advance, you know, because you're never really sure that the communication that is, is said we're going to do will actually be like that and what I always try to do is put a little caveat into our security planning that says this is what we've discussed this is what had been agreed but it could be based on some sort of security risk component that whatever's been put in place will be totally reversed and that's the expectations you got to manage so expect the unexpected yeah I think that's it that's the best thing to do <laughs> and uh and so here we're, we're coming out of the venue for a second, so we've got to scan our badge out, is that right? 
Yeah, here we have uh, all of our badge scanning. We scan people coming in and yep. coming out. We know exactly who's in our, our, uh, our premises. Um, it's run with the actual accreditation uh, being given out by the uh, registration team. And the whole uh, system itself is actually run by my uh, compliance officer, data protection and privacy officer, who's Livy Trollier. And right. this is really quite a, a sophisticated system. And it's the same system that we're using in Geneva at the ITU headquarters. That's correct. And we have the opportunity to use that uh, here, wherever we go to a, an actual event. And also we, we use the opportunity to uh, use our biometric badges that we've got in place here. So it, everything works out pretty good. And uh, so there's lots of security coming in and out of the venue. Yeah, there's co we're constantly being, uh, uh, being checked uh, that our ID is correct and, and also that, uh, uh, that we're not carrying any metal or anything else. In there. Yeah, that's correct. Everything's the same. It's all put in place. This is a, this is a, a compliance uh, standard for any UN uh, conference uh, in the world. So um, everything is uh, done exactly like this and everything works out very well. And in principle, an event like this, essentially, it's just a matter of scaling it up. We'll do 3,000 uh, or so delegates and make it much more complicated. No, I, I mean, once you put something in place for security, the idea is that you're, you're in place for whether it be, you know, a, a couple hundred delegates or we go with, uh, you know, up to the maximum three, four, five thousand 5,000 delegates. Uh, the, the things we put in place can, can easily uh, uh, handle uh, any of those numbers, and that's the whole goal of uh, the, the whole security planning, etc. Well, Drew, thanks so much for this uh, wonderful insight into the, the, the security here, security arrangements here in Shama Sheikh in Egypt for WRC 19, but also uh, uh, your 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 day-to-day -day work. And uh, hopefully, I wasn't too bad a driver here. You passed. You got your test. Okay. Your certificate. <laughs> Great. So here we go. Put it in park and turn it off. Thanks a lot, Drew. You're Cheers. <laughs>